Thank you very much, and good morning to everyone. I think it was uh, impressive of, of Gade Helgeson yesterday to be the last speaker, and it's always a challenge maybe to be the first. Um, but I hope that our session will be um, a very interesting one, because it's, a, it's an important topic um, that we have to discuss. And I think I would like to start by saying, saying the obvious, but it, it is important to, to remember that, that in the globalized world of today, with the multitude of complex challenges that we are all facing, far and close, the dialogue and the intercultural interaction is needed more than ever. Swedish Institute has been, been an organization since 1945, and, and sometimes I feel that our work is more important today than it has been in a very, very long time. And this is, um, this is in many ways, sad to know. The reason also is obvious that so sustainable solution, and that is what we all are looking for, to all the global challenges, and be them economic, ecological, social, political, or other challenges. The solutions will most likely not come from individuals or individual nations. They will come rather through collaboration between different stakeholders, nations, NGOs, um, and other forms of, of networks and, and shared interests. And this is, this is the fundamentals in, in where we are acting today, regardless if we talk about our activities as branding or as cultural diplomacy, public diplomacy, uh, digital diplomacy, sports diplomacy, or whatever. It is about trust building. We were addressing that yesterday, and I think it, it is so important to underline that without trust, there be, will be no true interaction and no possibility for us to, to together solve or address at least the challenges that we see. But without trust, there will also be no true branding, if that is what is, is your main mission. Um, and yes, um, the culture sector has proven again and again its important contribution to societies in, in, in all areas. And when it comes to relation building, social inclusion, conflict resolution, and the promotion of human rights, and even the economy of the societies. So culture is a very, very vivid part, an important part of all these activities. And I can say that because the Swedish Institute has today no um, no mission to do any work to internationalize the Swedish cultural sector, whereas we do have assignment to work for the internationalization of the business community and the Swedish higher education, but not for the cultural sector. However, of course, culture is an integral part in all our activities. Um, so, so the Swedish Institute, just to, to, to say that, is obviously um, an organization funded by government in order to enhance the knowledge about Sweden, build relations, but in the end of the day, uh, it's about trust. We have the focus mostly far away, but also very, very strong focus in the near region and, and, um, and on the implementation of the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region and also for the Eastern Partnership. And with this broad, we work in all the different areas in, in you could talk about cultural diplomacy, but we work in scholarships, um, uh, leadership programs, Swedish language education, but also um, strategic communication, website, Twitter accounts, uh, all, uh, the entire area. And this means that we have maybe a slightly broader assignment than many of our colleagues um, in, in this field. And I would be happy to come back to that, but it's not really about the Swedish Institute I think we should talk. We are merely sort of one of the players and, and can share our experiences. Um, 
But of course, in our work, as, as also was mentioned yesterday, the importance of listening is extremely, that is, natural. We need also to have a long-term perspective and reciprocity or mutuality. And this is, and, and long-term long is also one of the core factors, and we were talking about it, Karina and I, this morning, and, um, that government might want to have very quick fixes, needs to see results, the trade figures, um, attracting talent or other things. You can never, very, very rarely, you can see quick results. This is long-term, and you have to stay stick to your matters. And you have to measure it at the same time, because that's the only way to really see what we're doing, um, how that, in the end of the day, is really aligning with the policies of your government or, or with, with the overall uh, interest. So we aspire, from our perspective and from the Swedish perspective, we aspire on, on on um, listening closely, understanding who we're talking with in order to see where and how and if Sweden, Swedish experiences can be relevant and more important, where and how we can co-create, collaborate with the partners in other countries. And we, we aspire, as I said, on, on the long-term perspective and very much in establishing, we believe in, in creating networks and keeping the networks for, for the future. So, um, but what can we do then more than beyond talking, so to say? In this seminar, these two days are, are focusing up on, on the Nordic countries and the Nordic collaboration in, 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 um, in one way. And of course, we have a long tradition. Um, we have a long history, we have a long tradition of similar values of similar solutions and of also sharing it and working, finding solutions uh, jointly. We are colleagues and we are competitors, but I think we're more colleagues than competitors in everything we do. And, and today I, I can say that almost every Danish, Finnish, Swedish, uh, Norwegian embassy today around the world are planning Nordic activities film weeks, literature evenings, um, economic seminars, uh, anything. And today we're more and more including the Baltic states in these seminars, in these activities, which I think is the only right thing to do. So yes, there are uh, many, many good ways of Nordic collaboration, and, and I assume that the next session will we'll dig deeper into the potential of that, because there is only a potential and no threat. Another possible way of collaborating in, in our region, in, in the larger region, is of course through UNIC. I don't know how many of you have heard about UNIC, but, but UNIC is the European Union National Institutes for Cultural um, Network. This is, this is the Swedish Institute, the Danish Institute, the British Institute, the Goethe, uh, all of our colleagues within the European Union. We get together, heads level, but more important, we get together in 90 clusters around the world to see how we can strengthen our work together, strengthen the work of, a, an, of Europe, and also benefit individually from that. Today we have very, very interesting collaboration in Moscow, growing in St. Petersburg, Nothing in Ukraine so far, but we do have discussions on what we can do together in Ukraine, in Belarus, and, and, and other countries. And I think this is a very important way that we should um, take on. But it's, of course, as all collaboration, um, somewhat burdensome, and we need to bring in resources. To this, we, will, uh, we are in close contact with the Commission, and, and UNIC has also just been given a, a larger project from, from the EU. Um, I think it's also a very important discussion that we have within UNIC, um, 
and not only within Munich, but in other places, and that is really to go beyond branding. Because this is, I mean, branding is one part, but if we want to create sustainable solutions, it is, it has to be not only beyond aid, which we were talking about yesterday, and which has been sort of a, a way of discussing for a long time, but it's also beyond nation branding. It's beyond flag waving. It's to see the common interest and, and, um, and um, to see the cooperation and co-creation together. The third way, the third very obvious way, is of course to take advantage of all the opportunities there are in the implementation of the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region and also in, in the strategy of the Eastern Partnership. And I think we have much to do here. Um, there are interesting projects. Uh, one BSR was mentioned, Involve is another. There are numerous of, of, of good examples. It's not an easy task to, to, to bring together multi-level stakeholders. It's, it's a hard work, but um, it's important that we do not only talk this way, but that we can manage to meet civil society, business, academia, uh, governments of all levels from different countries and from different parts of the region, because that is how we strengthen this region. And that is also how we can, through this collaboration, can do things together in other parts um, um, east, eastward. So, um, and culture will play an extremely important role in, in, this, uh, in this work, and, and more so in the future, which I personally think is very important and, and is very happy about. How is my time? Okay. Um, so this week, and last week, and the coming weeks, we try, in, in all different ways, we have Swedish artists, Swedish um, authors, going on, on, a, on a trip to, to um, Ukraine and Belarus in order to meet their colleagues. And we will bring their colleagues back to Sweden to a poetry festival. It's just a minor example, but I think it's a very important example how culture can be used in the way of building uh, relations and trust and strengthening the networks in, in other parts um, and very fragile. Uh, parts of, of, of our region. Um, last week, I believe, we had new urban topologies in, in Riga, another example of how we try to, to build networks between stakeholders that not usually meet in different countries. It's about urban, um, sustainable urban development. And we can go on and, and, and discuss and bring on examples like this. I think the most important thing is that, that we see ourselves as um, colleagues and very important colleagues in, in, this, um, in this field. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much.